Tonight we're going to show you a whole lot of new music videos, but we're going to start off with a band that's been a driving force in Boston for years. I'm talking, of course, about the Beatings. For over 10 years, they've been a powerful presence in the local music community and have made some terrific music to boot. In 2001, they founded Midriff Records to lend more legitimacy to their self-released albums. But in the years since, Midriff has gone on to make its mark in the music world, putting out great albums from emerging artists like Louder My Dear, Hands and Knees, Ian Adams, and Age Rings. The Beatings are not just a band, they are forced to be reckoned with. And we're here at the Middle East. Uh, we're actually in the green room in the back uh, where people don't often get to see things. And we're here with the Beatings tonight. Hey, guys. Hello. Hi, Ryan. So uh, the Beatings, um, I don't know if anyone's figured it out yet, are one of our favorite bands. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely just figured it out. <laughs> the, you guys are one of the best rock bands in the city, though, and it's certainly the last decade one of the most influential. So uh, That's very generous and sweet of you to say, but I, I just don't know. It's, very, it's hard to take yourself out of what you're doing you sure. know, and out of your art and look at it um, uh, objectively. Um, it's just kind of we've always done what we do, and we just kind of mother. We're here at the Middle East in the green room with the Beatings. <laughs> so you can't talk about the, the, the Beating story without talking about Midriff Records, its formation, and your strategy in using the label. It was sort of like a desperate act because it was, at that time, there weren't a lot of popular indie labels, there wasn't the internet, you didn't have Facebook or anything like that, so it was very hard for your band to get its name out there. And most people didn't want to deal with a DIY band, so we said we were on a label and people paid attention to us. And it became a lot of fun to do it that way. I'm glad we did it the way we did because it was a learning experience and, and before you know, social media and everything, it was really kind of a boots on the ground, get your hands dirty, learn how the music business works, get a lot of rejection, and uh, yeah, it toughens your skin, so it was good. And that kind of made it a lot cooler, you know, that we, we didn't rely on anybody else that we said, okay, this is what we want to do, let's figure out how to do it. But now, Midriff Records is a fully functional label in the sense through uh, sponsoring new artists. You've helped the music community here in Boston. And so for that, I commend you. Um, what has that stage of the process been like? I think if you, if you have a label and you're going to call yourself a label, you have a responsibility to do what a label does. And that's release music that's not just your own. Um, and I think that's what we've done. You know, it's like reached out to bands and, and tried to and tried to help them out because we know because we learned how to. You know, um, like we're big fans of you know if you if the door opens, jam your foot in it and get as many people in as you can get. Uh, because if you know how to do something, help somebody out. You know, um, there's no money in the record industry anymore. I mean, this is really it's really a compulsion and a, and a labor of love. It's interesting because I'll go anywhere in the country and people right here might not talk about you like the, the kids in the, in the college, but you'll go any city in the country and if you go to the right scene, everybody knows who you guys are. So I think that's really neat to have some legitimacy outside of the area, you know, festivals. Stuff. That just means we have to leave this city. <laughs> We've been in the wrong city all these years. So we're going to take a look at a new video. Why don't you introduce it? Uh, it's a video for all the things you, that you've been missing um, off of uh, the late season kids album and is directed by Steven San Miguel uh, and we shot that at O'Brien's. So why don't we go ahead and check it out? A little enthusiasm, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> why don't we go check it out? Here it is. <laughs> Maybe again. Right? I know. Hold on. Why don't we check it out? There it is. It's on your TV. <laughs> So, do any of you have any particular memories? I'd like to actually share um, maybe some of your memories about the first show you went to in Boston or somebody that really stood out for you. Well, I think of um, Megan McLaughlin from Rock City Crime Wave. I don't know when that was my first show to see her playing, but she was just up on stage and she had total like power over her instrument and could really like just play so loud. And I just, really wanted to be her. The first time, like, I think I was completely impressed, and it wasn't a Boston band, it was actually uh, 
Queens of Stone Age upstairs in the Middle East. Uh, yeah. They filled the whole room with smoke and you couldn't even see anyone playing. You just saw these shadows. You couldn't even see like the person standing next to you. And actually it was before I knew any of these guys. I think all of them were actually yeah. at the show. So it shows also like how small Boston is. Like I didn't even realize that these guys were at that show until afterwards we were talking about it. Yeah. So loud. I mean, even if I knew you, I wouldn't even known you were there, so. I saw Rock City Crime Wave play at the Linwood once, and this was before I had just moved up here. I wasn't in the beatings yet, and I was mystified by how someone could get on stage and play, and it was terrifying to me. And then Ian sang the whole song on top of a stack with the microphone in his mouth. It was a great memory of Boston, and it sort of said, like, you can get on stage and pretty much do just about anything as long as you believe in it and you love it and it'll translate. I, I think my, fam my fondest memory of Boston's when, um, when the beatings started feeling like Boston was our home, um, going to Newberry Comics and seeing us on the tray <laughs> thing. I mean, that was, that's a big deal to be 25 years old and you know playing in bands since you're 15 and see an album of yours in the store. I mean, it's, it was a huge deal for me. I kind of felt like, like we did it. That's cool. Playing with these guys was, is probably my fondest uh, Boston memory. Um, no, I'm wrong. It was Queens of Stone Age. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>